Hi and welcome to this body clock um, yoga flow. The body clock practice is a really good practice to do um, to reset or to synchronize all your body systems and organs. Uh, it's a good thing to do when you're feeling really de-energized, you're feeling maybe after a very stressful period in your life, um, maybe um, when you're ex suffering extreme exhaustion. And it's a good way to sort of synchronize the body so that it can heal itself a lot better. We're going to be working through the five elements associated with in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. And we go through them through the times of the day. So it's not a seasonal order. We get each of the organs um, sort of has an optimum time of day when it functions at its best. So we're going through, we're going to start early in the morning and we're going to go through the day, uh, sort of working through the elements and the associated organs for that particular time of day. So as we go through the practice, see how you relate, not only to the little sequence of postures. So if you find them challenging or whether you find them quite easy or whether you find them enjoyable, but also what do you like at that particular time of day? How um, are you? Are you a morning person? You're an evening person? Do you slump after lunch? Do you wake up in the middle of the night? So just see how you relate to that particular time of day. I'll also talk through some of the associations, and that might also trigger a sort of response in your head as to how you might feel um, in relationship to those themes or to those ideas. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. We're going to start. We're going to go straight into it. So if you need to do a little bit more warming up before this practice, maybe just do a few little forward folds or a little side bend or a twist or shake the body a little bit before we begin. But I'm just going to move straight into it. What you might need is a flat block and possibly a strap or, or some sort of a, a tie. If you have a bolster or some cushions, I'd have them nearby. There's, a, there's one particular stretch that requires us to move into a bit of a back bend, and it can be quite intense. You can stay just seated, but if you do want to, to lie down in it, then having something to support yourself is a really good idea. Okay, so we're gonna to come to the back of our mat, the foot of our mat to start the practice, and just have the feet, we'll bring the feet together actually, so the feet are touching. And just begin just by bringing the hands onto the abdomen and just noticing the body. Relaxing the shoulders, just taking a few breaths just to steady yourself, and just to notice how you feel before we begin the actual practice. Nice slow breath in and a nice slow breath out. <sighs> just calming and quietening the mind with the breath. And remember, only take postures to a degree, to a depth that is suitable for you in your body right now. I'll show easier variations on some of the poses. So please do take the easier, gentler variation if it's applicable to you, okay? If the body is under stress, then putting it under even more stress by taking it into a pose that is too difficult isn't helpful. So bending into the legs, we're gonna start in a fierce pose. So filling the stretch through the backs of the ankles, a length through the spine. You can have the arms at shoulder height or bring the arms in line with the ears as you breathe. Just taking the gaze softly and gently out in front of you. Good, as your next exhale, bring the palms together as you fold forward. Just linger in that forward fold for a moment and then walking the hands forward to come down onto your hands and knees. Stepping the left leg through. So we're going to always start with the left side of the body in all the sequences. The left side is associated with the yin aspect of your body. And it's a sort of calmer, quieter, stiller, more feminine aspect. So just notice in this lunge how the body feels. Get a feeling of opening into the hips and a little stretch through the front of that back thigh. As you exhale, fold forwards and draw back into a hurdler stretch. Come onto the heel to experience the stretch all the way down the back of the leg from the sit bones to the heel. Coming forwards into the lunge again, just resting the hands on the thigh, keeping this thigh plugged into the hip sockets. 
and then gently release and move it back into all fours. So hands under shoulders, cat cow, as you arch the spine. As you breathe in, tilting the pelvis towards the floor, the gaze moves forwards, and as you exhale, round. So as we go through the little sort of vinyasa flow aspect of the practice in between each of the segments, you could choose to do this pose as opposed to the little flow that I do. So if the flow that I do is a little bit challenging, then maybe just come and do a few movements of the spine. Push back into a child's pose, big toes together, knees wide, sinking the hips back. Breathe in and out slowly. Just notice the body. And then inhale as you lift to all fours and step the right leg through into that lunge. Rest the hands on the thigh as you find that lunge. Just feeling the opening into that hip. Relaxing the shoulders as you breathe. Slowly in and slowly back out. Good, release the hands down, draw back into a hurdler stretch, pointing the toes towards the ceiling, just to warm up through the backs of the legs. And then inhale as you come forward, stretching the hands on the leg again into that anjasana, that lunge. Stepping it back into child's pose. Good toes together, knees a little bit wider, sinking the hips back. And then inhale as you lift up. Take a little back bend here. So I'm just going to tuck my toes under, lift up, rest the hands just on the hips. And imagine you're just pressing the body up against a wall as you open through the front of the body. You can drop the head back, tongue to the back of the, to the roof of the mouth, the back of the teeth, or keeping the gaze in front of you as you breathe. So just a sort of gentle back bend. And as you exhale, fold again into your forward fold. Okay, take a moment to counterpose. And then inhale as you lift up, tucking the toes under, bringing the edges of the feet together, pushing back over onto the soles of the feet, sinking into the legs, lifting up from the pubic bone to the navel as you bring the arms either side of the ears. And as you exhale, bring the hands back to the center of the chest. Okay, so take the feet hip distance, send the arms up, take a little side stretch. So hold onto that left wrist as you send the arm over to the right. Breathing in, hold on to the right wrist as you send the arm over to the left. Good, come back to the center and fold. Come down and just crawl along your mat and we're gonna lower all the way down to the belly. Just give it a little stretch, a little stretch through the front of the feet, and then walk it back into a sphinx pose. Elbows directly under the shoulders and hands straight forward from the elbows, and just experience that sense of a back bend, shoulders drawing down. So again, this could be your choice of back bend in between the six segments of practice. Exhale as you lower, bring the hands a little bit wider, lift the shoulders and the hips, move it back into a child's pose. There's going to be no down dogs in this practice. And then inhale as you move up to all fours, again, tucking the toes under, pushing it back over onto the soles of the feet, feet hip distant, and then inhale as you come on up. So we're going to come into our first element. Time of day, metal element time of day is 3 till 7 a.m. in the morning, the lung and the large intestine. So the lung and the large intestine, the metal element, it's all about knowing your boundaries, having a sense of structure and order. And we're going to start with the Makaho stretch for the metal element. So bring your arms up, really define your parameters, your boundaries around you. So you bring the arms behind the back, interlace the fingers, thumbs press into the fleshy area between the index finger and thumb, and the index finger points away. Feet a hip distance, open through the front of the body as you exhale, fold forwards. And just letting the hands lift away from the hips, a little gentle shovel of the shoulders as you breathe. An audible exhale. The lung and the large intestine are all about what you bring into the body. So breathing in and then what you let go of. So letting go of what no longer serves you. 
the time of year we normally practice is, is in the autumn time when the sort of trees have bare branches, they've lost all their leaves, the leaves have dried and fallen to the ground and there's all this space and openness around you. Good, lower the arms to the back of the waist and inhale as you very gently lift up, release the arms and as you exhale, come down to the ground. And just come into that all fours position, stepping the left leg through into that lunge position. So the right hand's going to come underneath the shoulder, the left leg, remember, always going first and turning in an inwards rotation. So the lung meridian comes from the just beneath the last third of the collarbone, up the inside of the arm, all the way to the thumb. So we're really stretching into that shape. And the large intestine from the index finger all the way down the back of the arm, along the top of the shoulder, across the neck, the jaw, and it ends on the opposite side of the nose. Okay. Bring the hand down and take it into an, an open rotation. Now there's a little option here for something extra. So either keeping um, arms wide or lowering the top arm down to thread behind the back of the body and the lower hand pops through the legs to see if you can link the fingers and this really opens into lung one which is a bow point for the lung meridian so it's a really good way into the organ and the energy of that system breathe in and let go of what's no longer needed Good, release the hands and bring the hands either side of this front foot. You can keep the knee down or you can lift the knee off the ground, bringing the arms behind the back again, interlacing the fingers and maybe lifting the heel as you elevate the hands away from the hips. Just trying to take a couple of breaths in each pose, remembering to take the easier option if necessary, kids. Lovely, lower the hands to the hips, lower the hands down either side of that front foot, step it back, thread the needle, Soki and Drasana. We're going to do this again later on in the sequence, but this one particularly good for the lung and the large intestine. I brought a block in for my head, you could bring a cushion or a folded blanket, threading the left arm underneath the right, keeping the hips back above the knees to experience that rotation through the rib cage. And then either keep the right hand on the ground or bring that right arm up and thread it around the back again to open into the lung point, which I can point out when I'm working on the other side. Breathing, find that rotation, really letting the back of the arm press into the ground. The metal people tend to be quite organized, very structured and disciplined but there's also an out of balance quality to all these elements. So that might be someone who's so structured and organized that they become isolated, they become separated from others. Grief is the emotion associated when out of balance. Release the hand back down, push into that hand to come back up and push back into child's pose, sinking the hips back. And then inhale as you come on up. So we take our first sort of flushing vinyasa here. So you can lower, you can take your sphinx pose or take a baby cobra. Bring the hands a little bit wider than the chest and just roll the shoulders down. Good, we'll lower for this first one. Bring the hands a little bit closer to the body to lift the shoulders and the hips and send it back into child's pose. And just take a moment in child's pose just to simulate to process what you've been doing. The lung, time of day, 3 to 5 a.m. The large intestine, 5 to 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, is that a time of day that really relates to you? Is it a time of day that you struggle with? So stepping that right foot forwards. First of all, left hand underneath. You could place a block underneath the hand. Find that inwards rotation really opening into that lung point, just underneath the last third of the collarbone. Good. Just think about how structured and organized you are. And then bring that hand down on the inside of the leg. So then open rotation, really opening into this point just here or threading the arm behind the back to 
can find a slightly stronger rotation. You could hold the thigh or you could find the other hand as you breathe. So just here is the point that we're opening up into with that top shoulder. Good, feel steady, feel balanced. Take another breath and then release. Bring the hands either side of that front foot. So remember, you can keep the knee down or you can tuck the toes and lift the knee, bringing the arms behind the back. Try to interlace the fingers the way you don't like doing it. Lift the heels as you send the arms up towards the sky. So vulture pose as you breathe. Find that steadiness. The breath is a really important part of the um, practice the metal practice as its association with the lungs focus on that breathing good lower the heel lower the hands down push back into child's pose big toes together knees apart sinking the hips back and then inhale as you lift taking it into the rotation Sakya and Drasana, right arm this time threads under left resting the head maybe and again either just supporting yourself with this left hand or bringing the arm around and wrapping it around the back of the body to open into lung one draw the breath in through this point as you breathe good okay take another breath here And then release, bring that hand back down to the ground and inhale as you lift. Just push the block to the side and pushing back into child's pose. So take our little flow again. So in between each side, we'll take another chest baby cobra. Step the hands a little bit wider. Roll the shoulders down and back. This time, keep pushing into the hands as you send it back into child's pose. So do adapt that little flow in between to make sure it's something that is suitable for you and your practice. So that's the metal element complete. We now move into the earth element. Time of year is late summer and time of day is um, from, it's a stomach and spleen from seven till 9 a.m. in the morning and 9 till 11 a.m. for the spleen. Good, breathing in as you lift and lower down onto the belly. Good, so there's two variations of this first pose. First one, you can bend the right arm and rest, reach back for the left ankle. If this is quite doable, then release the right arm out in front of you. Take a half bow, so drawing the right armpit back, as you push that left ankle into the hand to get the back bent. So think about it, stomach and spleen time of day, early in the morning, 7 till 9 a.m., around the time that you'll have your breakfast, and 9 until 11 a.m. for the spleen. How are you around that time of day? Releasing down, pushing back into your child's pose, feet together, knees a little bit wider, just counterpose that back bend first before we go into the rest of the sequence. And the sort of earth element is really associated with balance and stability, feeling grounded, nourishment. Think about what the stomach does. Inhale as you lift up. Shift the hips over to the right side so that the heels are free. And just rest that left ankle in the arch of the bottom foot turn towards that side and send the left arm up the spleen meridian is a supportive meridian it comes up the body and the stomach meridian is a grounding meridian it runs down the spleen actually comes up the side of the body here and it ends between the bottom of the ribs halfway between the armpit and the bottom of the ribs so we're really opening up into the meridian line itself release the arm down this top leg step it through the bottom leg then you can bring it forwards a little bit so you can center your hips you're going to interlace the fingers around the ball of the foot if you need to release the bottom leg and have it straight that's fine you can keep it there keep it there and then send the heel away good relax the shoulders down for heron pose doesn't matter if the leg goes straight or if it remains bent. So think about how you relate to that time of day, sort of early to mid-morning. 
you're a morning person and the qualities associated with the earth element of being quite grounded think of an earth mother type someone who really looks after others sort of a friend to everybody lower the leg down stepping the leg across remember this leg can be straight and taking it into your rotation bringing the arm on the inside of the leg as you relax the shoulders down but like any anybody you can get out of balance sometimes um, someone who maybe works too hard looking after others when they're out of balance they become there's a lot of self-pity so low self-worth they can become worried so if that's a tendency of yours and then very gently release the twist and stack the two legs again one on top of the other lift the knees and release the right leg out in front of you so this is a half a hero pose i'm just going to walk forwards a little bit on my mat because i'm going to come down so with this pose you might need to lift the right hip a little bit higher so that you make it a little bit easier for this knee if it's really intense for this knee i would lean to the side and release the leg and do this just with straight legs and make it a back bend where you bring something in behind you to come back onto and i've got a bolster here i'm going to show you if it's fine to do this without anything underneath just let the hip rest on the ground and you could bring in if you had a bolster and you find this challenging you could bring in a bolster behind you across the ways or straight on okay so we're getting the stretch here so the stomach reading comes down the outside of the leg the spleen reading comes up the inside of the leg and we're just trying to intensify the stretch into the meridian lines this is the makaho or half of the makaho stretch for the elements i'm going to come all the way down i'm just going to bring in a flat block just to make it a little bit easier just one arm at a time to lower me down into the stretch and relax the shoulders experiencing the stretch all the way through the front of the body stomach's an unusual meridian line because it's a yang meridian and they're normally on the back of the body or the side but this one is on the front it's the only one that's on the front so think supportive spleen and grounding with the stomach meridian and just how do you feel about this stretch how do you feel about this little sequence of postures how do they relate to you? Are they challenging, enjoyable? See if you can release the tension in the area that we're focusing on. Get to come out of it, draw the shoulders up by the ears to see if you can lift up onto each forearm and then hand. Slowly coming forward and just give that leg a little bit of a press just to sort of soften or release any tension taking the block out of the way so i'll show you quickly if you did have a bolster that way on that might be a nice way to come down into the stretch as well okay to come out of it lean to the right to release the left leg forwards just take a moment to notice the leg we're going to take our little sequence our little flush in between you could bring the legs to the side or cross the legs to step it back and then take it back into child's pose where you can stay, you can come to all fours, cat cow, or you can lower chest, chin to the floor, and then maybe up into your upward facing dog. Remember, you can stay with your baby cobra as your variation. Exhale back into child's pose. Take a moment before you do the right side, the yang side. So lifting up, lower down onto the belly. First of all, the slightly easier variation you can pick, reaching back for that right ankle, just holding yourself up with this left forearm or extend the left arm in front of you, draw the armpit back as you push the leg into the hand to create the stretch through the front of the body. Breathe into that stretch, that opening. Take another breath and then release. Good, bring the hands under the shoulders, lift the shoulders and the hips as you send it back into child's pose. Big toes together, knees a little bit wide. Just take a moment to counterpose the back bend. 
and then letting the hips slip off to the left side so the feet are out to the right side you're stacking that right ankle onto the arch of the left foot there's a spleen point spleen six just four finger widths just above the inner ankle just on that tibia bone which is a really good point just to focus on in the stretch then that right arm up sort of a real tonifying points good for well-being and just find that sort of gentle rotation and that opening into the spleen meridian all the way up that right side of the body and just sort of hooking itself underneath the armpits lower the arm down step this right leg forward center yourself just a little bit so on both sit bones interlace the fingers through the sole of the foot and send the heel away doesn't matter if the leg straightens don't be caught up in sort of reaching a peak pose just work with the body as it is good lower the leg down stepping it over if you can remember you can release this bottom leg you could sit on a raise taking it into a slightly stronger rotation rotations really good for the stomach and spleen that idea of sort of helping moving stuff through think about nourishment for the whole body nourishing your systems nourishing your blood and creating more sort of energies particularly energy that's going to be used in defensive in a defensive way for the body good and then release come all the way around and sit in that sort of mermaid pose and then lift the knees to release the left leg into half a hero remembering you can bring in your support underneath that left hip if like me maybe you've come again a little bit far back on your mat inching forwards and maybe bringing in a bolster to come back down onto okay so i use the bolster on this side so we're experiencing the stretch through the front of this thigh the heel is out a little bit towards the outside of the hip and maybe coming down if you're on a raise you probably won't come back too far and if you want to come all the way down to the ground then you really need to release the raise from underneath but if you need the raise to help with this knee and slowly coming down and it's you can build up the bolster with a couple of blocks as well to make it a little bit easier to move into that shape and just notice how that feels down the front of that leg as you breathe that's a wonderful opening that can be quite a challenging opening for some people as you breathe okay. think about that time of day sort of early to late morning how do you relate to that are you an earth mother type but do you sometimes take on too much as well and deplete yourself hunching the shoulders up to the ears to lift up very gently coming out of it and just give that leg a little massage just a little pressure down good taking the block away leaning to that left side to release the ankle rolling the bolster out of the way just noticing the two legs and then we go with our flush so remember you can bring the legs to the side you can cross the ankles as you make your way back into child's pose big toes together knees wide inhale as you come up remember the variations or starting to maybe work into upward facing dog back into down into child's pose let's take a moment to process that little sequence for the earth element just noticing how you feel after that little practice Good. so we're going to come to work with the primary fire now so the sort of fire is split into two a primary and a secondary the primary fire is sort of high summer time and it's the heart and the small intestine so we're going to slide this two ways a couple of ways of getting into this this particular pose gamma kasana going to bring the right leg forward and slide it over the left so just watch if you're not too sure take the feet a little bit wider and sink back and this is where you might need to bring in a block to sit on 
if it's a tall, if there's any discomfort for the knees. So if this is too intense, you know without getting into it is too intense, then just come to seated, sit on a raise, and just step the right leg over the left. Okay, that's all you need to do. So if you're in the full shape of the pose, you can really lift the hips to really see if you can get those knees to nicely stack one on top of the other. We're gonna focus into the left arm first. So the meridian lines, the heart and the small intestine, they're in the arms, all the fire meridians are in the arms. We're gonna take the strap. If you have one, you can do this without or just with a tie or with a dressing gown belt. Send the arm up, bend at the elbow to bring the palm into the sort of space between the shoulder blades. Other hand comes around to hold the elbow to encourage the stretch into the side of the body as you breathe. Other arm then can release and you bring the arm behind the back to see if you can find the other end of the strap, walking the hands towards each other. Don't worry or get hooked up on trying to actually hold the fingers together. So let me just show you from the back what that looks like. So I'm just here, I'm not going any deeper than that, but you could link the fingers as well if you wanted to. So once you've found the shape of the pose, it's a challenging pose, this one, for a lot of people. If the legs are quite nicely stacked together, you could fold forwards. So you're really putting some pressure into the small intestine organ and the heart itself. If this top knee is up quite a lot, I would stay seated like this, just in an upright position. If you've managed to get quite deeply into it, then feel free to fold forward. So the heart really is our main organ of the body. It's like the supreme sovereign. The time of day when the heart is meant to function at its best is 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So over that lunchtime period. And the small intestine is after lunch, 1 till 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So how are you around that time of day? What does that time of day feel like or look like for you? Good, inhale as you lift up. Keep the bottom arm where it is, release the top arm down and take that into a gentle twist. There's a few muscles associated with these meridians and organs and the abdominal muscles are one for high summer, for the fire elements. And I'm just giving them a little bit of a, sort of a squeeze in this rotation. And then releasing, taking the strap to the side, leaning back to release the legs. And you can stay on the raise, you can come off the raise to bring the soles of the feet together. So this is the Makaho stretch for the primary fire. Just walking my hips in a little bit closer to my heels. Heart is gonna lead me forward into the stretch. Elbows are gently pressing on the inner thighs. Good, opening through the front of the body. And the, the adductor muscles again are a link muscle. So which is why we're sort of just gently opening into those adductors. Fire element, think high summer, think uh, full energy, think barbecues, parties, being outside, going on holiday. It's a time of year of maximum energy, maximal fullness in nature. Nature is at its peak but sometimes we don't relate to that very well and we feel the opposite. We can feel anxious, we can feel stressed, we can feel tired. We don't want to socialize, we don't want to interact with others. Good. Then gently lifting up, bringing the legs together. Just bring the legs to the side and I'm just gonna bring my block around for the next pose. Again, Sakhi Andrasana. So maybe bringing in a block again. Threading the left arm, remember focus on the left side first. So threading that left arm through first. This time keeping the right palm on the ground close to that left wrist. And then maybe tucking the toes under, walking that right leg away or even lifting the leg up towards the sky. So a little bit of a balance, a core required, the idea of those abdominal muscles or a bit of a linked muscle. So how are you with your sort of wanting to socialize and party and interact with others is that is that you this always the center of attention wanting to have people around and do fun things joy is the emotion associated with the fire element good lower the leg back down to the ground push into the hand to come up 
move the block to the side, taking puppy stretch or anahatanasana, either with two arms or bend the right arm and rest the forehead on the back of the wrist. Keeping the hips above the knees as you allow the front of the body to open so you can see how this really gets into the heart organ itself, right in the center of the chest. And the meridian line comes from the armpit all the way down the inner arm to the baby finger. So focus into the shoulders too. So also someone who out of balance for fire could be someone who is very talkative, very manic, um, very stressed. And then inhale as you gently lift pushing back into your child's pose for a moment, lifting up, taking your little flush in between, making sure that it's suitable for your body. Maybe you stop doing the stronger back bends and just take something a little bit gentler, a little bit easier. Good, take a moment in between. And then inhale as you lift up. So going into our gamma cast on the other side. So the left leg this time wraps over the right. Feet separate. Sitting back, maybe bringing in a block to sit on. Remember, you can release that bottom leg and have it straight as well. Straps going into the right hand. The legs are stacking or this top leg might be pointing up a little bit more towards the ceiling. Bending at the elbow to create the stretch through the side of the body. Bringing the other arm around, palm faces back. Linking in to find the end of the strap. Opening through the heart center and possible fold forward for some of you. Good, as you breathe. The heart to do with circulation of blood around the body and energy around the body. Good, small intestine separating out the pure from the impure. That's your thoughts and ideas and emotions as well as the foods that you eat, the stuff that you put into your body. It's like the bouncer at the nightclub stopping the people it doesn't want to come in and allowing those in that it trusts and feels will behave well. And then inhale as you lift up. Top arm releases, you bring it down to the outside of the thigh to take that rotation, just again, just to work a little bit through the abdominal area as you breathe. And then release, just releasing the strap, leaning back to release the legs, coming off the raise. You can sit on the raise if you need to bring in the soles of the feet together. Vatikanasana, just walking the hips in a little bit closer, leading with the chest forwards into that space, maybe a little encouragement through those inner thighs, the adductors, come into the folds, focusing on the circulation, using the breath to help you. It's, I'm on my fire mat, so red is the color of the fire element. Each of the elements has a color associated with it as well. We're going to do a nice relaxation working with the colors. And then really saying, bringing the legs together, coming around for your Sakyandrasana. So remember this time, right arm under left, maybe you're raised for your head. Left palm is down, really supporting you. So it's a really good position. Maybe extending that left leg away and even lifting the leg up. Find that balance. Keep that right arm down. Remember that small intestine meridian comes up the back of the arm into the shoulder. Just a little zigzag into the shoulder blade. Then it comes along and up the neck. Good. Breathe. And then slowly lower that leg back down, retract the arm, take it into your puppy stretch. So walking the hands forward, maybe the left arm this time needs to bend as you extend that right arm away. Find that opening through the rib cage. It's and then inhale as you lift up, push back into child's pose, sink the hips back. Resting if you need to rest, cat cow or lower baby cobra or into your upward facing dog. 
exhale send it back into child's pose so that's primary fire finished so moving into water element now so this we've gone from the height of summer we're now moving into the depths of winter so water element the most yin time of year normally practice this sort of in january february time i'm going to focus on the left leg first bending it bringing it into the inner thigh. And I've really taken a really strong Janus Shasana here because the kidney meridian runs really deep onto the inside of the leg. Just take the flesh a little bit away from the sit bone. If there's any discomfort on this knee, prop it. If it's still uncomfortable, do two straight legs, Paschimottanasana. Fold down that leg. You can find kidney one, which is a point in the ball of the foot. So the meridian lines, sorry, are bladder and kidney. So the sort of watery um, theme there with the organs and kidney is the, the yin one, is the sort of most important one. And the point, the bubbling spring, if you sort of draw your toes into curl them over, you get a little hollow just underneath the ball of the foot. And that's a really nice place to press into for grounding, for stabilizing. The water element is very quiet, very calm. It's maximum yin time of year. People who can move through life easily, flow through life without any problems, having a sort of affiliation with the water element, flow around any obstacles that get thrown in their path easily. Inhale as you lift up, take it into a rotation, drawing the ribcage towards that bent leg, maybe sending the other arm up and over to find that side stretch and really opening. So we're trying to find the side of the ribs here. There's a kidney point, the bow point, just here at the bottom of your 12th rib. We're just trying to open up into. Okay, take another breath. I love the bladder stretches. A lot of forward folds and back bends in the, the sort of water practice. And then inhale as you lift up. If you've got something under your knee, take it out. Just take a little back lean. Then come forwards, release the leg, take it into a two legged forward fold. So if you need to bend the knees a little bit, then do. And coming forwards. Again, you can just hold the legs. You can have the hands on the ground. You could put a blanket underneath your knees. You could hold the kidney one point. So you release into it. You could even rest the thumbs into a bladder point. The bladder meridian runs from the eyes, the inside of the eyes, over the top of the head, all the way down the back of the body like a motorway, either side of the spine, all the way down the backs of the calves and finishes on the baby toe. There's a lovely meridian to work with, um, really Sort of working with your parasympathetic nervous system response that rest and digest good inhale as you lift up you're going to go down onto our back so make sure you've got enough room hold on to your left leg as you lower down good send that left heel up towards the sky maybe hold the back of the thigh or the calf or maybe even hooking the big toe as you breathe Feeling that lovely stretch. In fact, it's quite nice to really massage down the calf in this position. So the, the bladder meridian comes all the way down the center of the back of the legs. So you can give it a little bit of work. And then bend that leg, take it into a twist just by resting the foot on the thigh as you draw the leg across. And feeling that lovely stretch. The hips maybe moving perpendicular to the shoulders, working very much through the spine. Anything that works through the spine is going to really help to sort of calm and soothe your nervous system. Breathing in, come back onto your back. I'm going to take a little inversion here. So bringing both feet in, lifting the hips, sliding the hands underneath the hips with the palms face down and just letting the legs flow up towards the sky. Shoulders relax down. So all very nourishing, very calming, quieting postures. Resting the legs like this is incredibly calming for the whole body. The second one, there's an option to move into a shoulder stand. But please, if you don't have shoulder stand in your practice, then just repeat this shape, okay? Shoulder stand is only a pose for those that are comfortable with having a little bit of weight through their neck. 
to come up slowly lower the legs down you can bend them to do this and lift the body bring the forearms to the floor open through the front of the body just maybe lifting the gaze or dropping the head back tongue to the back of the cheek as you breathe so a lovely little sequence for the water elements okay the time of day is 3 to 5 p.m in the evening and 5 to 7 p.m in the evening okay release the hands and come on up cross the ankles take it through come into your child's pose first then find your little flow flushing through anything any toxins any waste any negativity before we come and work bladder and kidney on the other side so release the legs around so yes yeah, so bladder 3 to 5 p.m kidney 5 to 7 p.m so that's sort of tea time time when you should sort of you've been working all day you need to think about a rest and replenishing yourself so bending that right leg bringing the sole of the foot in really close because the kidneys are really deep meridian into that inner thigh Bit the flesh away a little bit as you come forward so if you really relate to that time of day maybe that means there's a sense of harmony of this particular element also if you wear a lot of black so blue a deep dark blue is the color associated and often people wear a lot of blue or a lot of black sometimes if you only have that color in your wardrobe it could be an imbalance breathing in as you lift turn to your bent leg side find that rotation to open up into that 12th rib and maybe send the arm over oh it's a lovely stretch from the hip to the ribs and from the ribs to the shoulder as you open it's actually a gallbladder point so you can actually feel the gallbladder meridian opening too inhaling as you lift leaning back taking the block away if you used one and coming forwards into your Paschimottanasana. So if you have the legs a little bit bent on the first one, maybe think about having the legs a little bit straighter on the second one. Forward fold like this is always going to be very calming and soothing for the nervous system, for the mind and the body and the emotions. So breathe in calmness, quietness, and let go of anything any stress, any anxiety, any discomfort, any tension? Do you move through your life smoothly and easily? Do you have that sort of path laid out for you? Are you a good thinker? Inhaling as you lift up. So we're going to lower down. So if you're going to move into shoulder stand, create a bit of space. Hold on to the right leg as you lower down onto your back send that right heel up towards the ceiling interlace the fingers behind the thigh maybe the calf maybe press a little bit into the calf or maybe hook the big toe so really nice to work down the bladder meridian here as you breathe it can be quite tense down the back of the calf and the leg take it into that rotation looking into the spine your nervous system is housed balancing and harmonizing and then inhale as you come back to the center so either repeating the inversion from before or taking it into a shoulder span just holding the hips so i've got my hips quite far forward from my shoulders so it's a gentle shoulder span i'm not lifting the hips above my shoulders legs can be a little bit bent or you can extend the feet towards the ceiling good breathing benefits of the inversion they're just very soothing and calming for the body they're sort of replenishing the whole system you get that venous return of blood to the heart and there's nothing better than turning yourself upside down again to so come out of it bend the legs a lot so they come towards the body lower the hips down slowly to the ground then lower the feet to the floor we'll take a bridge pose this time you can repeat fish pose from before or snuggle the shoulders down a little bit and lift the hips into bridge Setsu Dandasana. so lots of forward folds and back bends feature in a water class 
as the meridians, kidney up the front and bladder down the back of the body. Get lower, either roll up or roll onto your side to come on up, bring the legs through. Take it into a child's pose to begin with. Just take a moment to assimilate that information to see maybe if you relate to that particular element. Take your little flush, whatever that is looking like now. Making sure it's suitable. Exhale as you send it back, as you breathe. So we're coming into our secondary fire now, the pericardium or heart protector and the triple heater, that nebulous meridian that I actually really like working with. So we're gonna bring the legs around, crossing the right leg in front of the, sorry, crossing the left leg in front of the right. We're gonna do the left side first. You can sit on a raise if you need to. Interlace the fingers, push the palms away and just really round the spine. So again, the meridian lines are in the arms. So there's a focus into the shoulders. Bring the arms behind the back, interlace the fingers, open through the front of the body. Okay, do that again. So heart protector or pericardium is at 7 till 9 p.m. is when it's meant to be functioning properly. Fold forwards. And the triple heater is at the very, very end of the day, so 9 till 11 p.m. at night. So are you a nighttime person? Is that when you really come to your fore? Good. Take another breath and then release, inhale. Then as you bring the legs up, keep the left leg but extend the right leg, creating a little gap between the bent leg foot and the straight leg. Bring the same arm as bent leg on the inside and tip yourself forward into a forward fold. So it's a variation of Marichasana. You can reach towards the straight leg foot or some of you can take a bind when you bring the arms around the back of the body but keeping in the forward fold. So the palms are quite an important feature. The, um, there's a lovely point, a heart protector point in the center of the palm, um, heart protector eight and the palms are the sort of quickest way into your heart. And fire type, so fire people imbalanced is someone who, like I said before, very sociable, very gregarious, very free flowing with the chat, good conversationalist, but out of balance, maybe they become a little bit hysterical, a little bit manic. The heart protector in particular is about protecting the heart from shocks and knocks. Kids, and then very gently release. Again, crossing the legs so the left leg is in front of the right. This is our Makaho stretch for this um, element. We're going to take the right arm, so the opposite arm to leg, so the right arm but left leg in front. Cross the arms, palms could be down or face up as you sink forwards into that forward fold. Focusing on the hips and into the shoulders as you breathe. Get a little compression into the sort of organ itself, the heart protector is the protective sac around the heart, the triple heater and the heart protector associated with fascia in the body or the fascial systems, the triple heater to do with all body systems as well, also maybe to do with heat in the body, the ability to control heat in the body and fluids. Good, breathing in as you lift, Swinging the legs around or keeping the legs crossed to come into your child's pose. Flushing through. Now you probably know the sequence. You know where you're going with it. You know what you want to do in between. Sending it back, child's pose for a moment. Good, lifting and bringing the legs around. So now we want the right leg in front of the left. Okay, interlace the fingers. Remember you can sit on a raise. Push the palms away and if the legs don't like sitting like this then just do this with straight legs that's fine bring the arms behind the back interlace a little arch one more round and a little arch fold if there's scope to fold good the breath is slow deliberate so coming to that end of the day 7 till 9 p.m. and 9 till 11 p.m. at the end of the day. 
How do you function at that time of day? Good. Slowly lower, release. Keep hold of this right leg as you extend the left leg. Bring in the right arm on the inside of the leg. You're reaching forward for the straight leg. Maybe taking it into the bind, the Manichasana bind, keeping the body folded forwards, keeping the back of this straight leg nice and long. Breathe slowly in and out. Good. And just notice what these poses feel like in your body. And do you have an affinity, a, a liking or a dislike for them? And then inhale as you lift, bring that right foot in front of the left again, left arm in front of the right arm, threading them through, stretching them out as far as they'll go to the sides as you fold forwards to experience the stretch into the shoulders, just pressing a little bit through the organs themselves. Good, take one more breath. And then inhale as you lift. Remember, you can bring the legs to the side or you can keep them crossed to roll through, taking it into a child's pose to begin, rolling through and down like a wave flushing through the whole system. Good. So now we're coming to our final element, the wood element, associated with springtime. And the color green, that lovely green, fresh growth. We're going to take the legs wide. And we're going to take this into a side stretch. So we're going to bring the left arm across the body. This is the macro stretch. And we're going to lower that shoulder towards the leg. Other arm can come up and over. Or you can keep this hand on the hip if you need to, to experience that stretch down the side. So we're working with the gallbladder and the liver. So this is a really good gallbladder stretch. It's gallbladder meridian is all the way down the outside of the body. It also comes into the head and the face, but this really focuses on the side of the body. It's in the time of day, gallbladder 11 p.m. till 1 a.m. in the morning. And the liver, the paired organ meridian is 1 a.m. until 3 a.m. in the morning. And that's our body clock finish. We started at 3 a.m. with the lung. Maybe think about whether you wake in the nights between those hours. Inhale as you lift, fold into the middle. Try to move smoothly between the shapes, between the poses. Good. Inhale as you lift, bring the hands behind you. Just lean back. Bring in the legs. Bring the soles of the feet together. Hook the big toes. See if you can balance. You can just maybe lift the left leg. Okay, if it's just one leg that's going to lift, lift the left one. Balancing. Good. And then release. And then we're going to come into a half side plank. Okay, so we're going to be resting the right hand down, the right knee down, and we're going to stretch through the left side of the body all the way down through the side. So that zigzaggy meridian line that comes down the side of the body for the gallbladder. Gallbladder is the decision maker. The liver's the planner. So are those characteristics that you have. Also very creative people or woody people. Inhale as you lift, take it into a side stretch the other way. So out of balance might mean that you find it difficult to um, plan things ahead of you, to structure things ahead of you. You don't have that vision, that clear vision. Okay, one more little side stretch. And then if it's in your practice, you can step the bottom leg through into a full side plank. Hold, making sure that bottom hand is directly under your shoulder. And then lower, a little flush, a little vinyasa in between. Rolling through, remember you can rest. If you prefer, send it back, child's pose. So that was our 11th. We've only got one more of those little flushes to do. You'll have done 12 of them by the time we finish. So again, taking the legs nice and wide, taking it to the right side this time, opening to the right side. The green is the color associated. Anger is the emotion. So sort of it's an imbalance. So if you are someone that gets angry or frustrated very easily, People who shout a lot, they're very bossy. 
who don't like exercise, woody people really, really like exercise. Get lower into your forward fold. Sometimes you're quite muscular in look. And then inhale as you lift, bring the legs in. Remember, just the right leg or two legs balanced. Draw the shoulders down as you send the heels away as you breathe. Release, take it into our final little sequence, coming into our side plank. Knee is beneath the hip, the hand is beneath the shoulder, foot is grounded. Send the arm up, find that side, stretch all the way down the side of the body, breathing in through gate pose, into the other side. And then inhale as you left, exhale into the side stretch. Yeah, just take one more, breathing in. And exhale. Just experience that stretch and then maybe stepping the leg through. If the stepping through to side plank's not happening for you, then just continue with the side stretch with the knee on the ground. Yeah. Get open. Take it into your little flush, drop the knees from child's pose, your final one to make it the best one that you've done all through the practice. Good. Send it back into child's pose. Just process that little bit of practice in the body. And then when you're ready, come to get ready for relaxation. Come down onto your back. So I'll just show you. And then I'm going to come to seated. So find a position that's comfortable. Bringing the arms out. You, if you had a bolster, you could bring the bolster underneath the legs. And just center the body and tune into the breathing. Make sure you're warm, make sure the lighting is dimmed. So I'm going to come to seated. You can stay where you are. Just become aware of the body resting on the ground. And tune into the breathing, the inhale and the exhale. all the meridians and all of the organs that we've worked with and all of these elements, the whole body practice. This is a lovely meditation, a Taoist meditation visualization. I learned it from one of my teachers, Mimi Kumodima, and she learned it from one of her teachers, Kenneth Cohen. It comes from the sort of Qigong Taoist um, principles. And it's each of the main yin organs has um, a gemstone that's related to it. And it's to do with the colors that we've been talking about in the practice. So we're going to start with the lung and we're going to go through the seasons as a cycle now. So starting with the lung, metal element, autumn time. And think about the lungs in your body, in the area of your rib cage, front, back, and sides. And as you breathe, think about the color white and a diamond. So a diamond white light. So as you breathe, you're going to bring in to that area of the lungs this diamond white light to really polish up your diamond and make it glow really brightly. And as you exhale, you're going to exhale out what dulls the shine of that diamond. So you breathe in, you polish your diamonds around the area of the lungs. And as you exhale, you let go of what dulls its shine. You take a few breaths with that concept of polishing. And as you exhale, letting go, which is really nice for the lung and large intestine as well, that concept of letting go. Then bring in our awareness to our kidneys. The kidneys are in the lower back, just above the back of the waist. So just bring your attention to the pair of your kidneys. The color associated with the water practice is a deep dark blue or a black. So I'm gonna pick a sapphire blue. So think of a sapphire blue gemstone, even sitting around the area of your kidneys. And as you breathe in, breathe in that sapphire blue color polish that gemstone really brightly and as you exhale out exhale out whatever dulls the shine of that gemstone so 
as you breathe in, you're breathing in, polishing. As you exhale, you're letting go and releasing. Take another two breaths with that concept. Breathing in and letting go. And then we're coming to the wood element. And coming to the liver. The liver is a really big organ on the right side of your body. And the stone associated or the color associated with the spring practice is green. And an emerald is the stone we're picking to work with. So an emerald green. As you breathe in, think about your liver on the right side of your body. Breathe in that emerald green color into your liver. Polish your stone. And as you exhale, exhale out whatever dulls the shine of that emerald green stone. Breathe in, polish, brighten. And as you exhale, let go of whatever dulls the shine. Take another two breaths. Focusing on that. And then bring your awareness to your heart. So our primary, our fire organ. Think about the heart right in the center of the chest. So maximum yang time of year, the color is red. So I'm going to pick a ruby red color for the heart. As you breathe in, breathe into the area of the heart, this ruby red color. Polish that color, polish that stone with the in-breath. And as you exhale, release and let go of whatever dulls its shine. Breathing in that ruby red color. And as you exhale, letting go of what dulls that stone shine. Take another couple of breaths, focusing on that visualization. Finally, we come to the spleen, the yin organ for late summer associated with the earth element. The color is, can be from sort of a yellow ochre through to a brown, and I'm going to pick an orange, the color of my headbands. So a topaz orange. So I'm feeling very earthy today. I've got my orange strap, my orange headband. So breathe in that topaz orange into your spleen. The spleen is just beneath the heart behind the stomach, a little bit on the left side of the body. Breathe into the spleen, polish that gemstone, and as you exhale, let go of whatever dulls the shine of the spleen and of that topaz orange. Breathe in, polish the stone, and exhale, release, and let go of anything that dulls its shine. Take another couple of breaths. Then think about all your organs as you breathe. Think about bringing in clarity and polish to all those gemstones associated with those organs and elements. Take a few breaths, just polishing every single gemstone in your body. And as the gemstones are polished, feel a sense of vitality and balance a sense of life and energy through the systems of the body. Feel those gemstones glowing brightly, shining strongly with every breath that you take. The last couple of breaths. Feel that vitality through the whole system. And then when you're ready, just bring the focus back a little bit more to the body, to the breath. Consciously breathing. Have a little stretch, stretch the arms overhead, stretch the legs, bring the feet together. Bring the knees into the chest, have a little rock from side to side. Choose which way you're going to go. We've been focusing left is yin, right is yang. So roll to whichever side feels good. Rest for a few breaths there. 
It's just quite interesting to see your tendency towards the yang or towards the yin aspect. And then make your way up to seated. Sit in a comfortable seated position with a nice relaxed spine, shoulders relaxing down away from the ears. Again, just focus on the breath, slowly coming in and slowly moving out. Feel the glow of those gemstones and don't let anybody dull the shine of those stones through the rest of your day. Keep them polished. As you breathe in, let the arms float up until the palms meet. Bring the thumbs down to the crown of the head, to the third eye, the space between the eyebrows and to the heart center, to that ruby red stone. Om Shanti. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Do subscribe to my videos and if you tick the little bell as well, it means that when I put a new video up, you will get a notification. Thank you very much and I, I hope you enjoyed that body clock flow. There's also a body clock yin practice as well, which you can, which you can do. Have a good day. Bye.